Shalom. I'd like to say our praise is due unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, the bonds of the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful members of the elect. My name is Karnawak from GMS, to to GMS Toronto. This is a, um, a late lesson. And I basically, I'm, um, this is a late night lesson. So, um, you know, if you want to hear, just turn up your audio a little bit more. But um, there's a lot of things going on, you know, a lot of prophecies being fulfilled. You know, we know that uh, this Ellen Moss, you know, um, I have some notes, you know, that I just uh, did. This is Ellen Moss, um, B system, RFID technology, right? And because this is the Right now we're living under this man's technology and uh, this prophecy has to be fulfilled and they're using this Ellen Moss, you know, um, there is a video that I see, I saw th with this Ellen Moss guy and um, he basically was wearing the, uh, that the Baphomet and uh, pretty much, it's like a, yeah, he's pretty much, uh, like, for this program, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's real, man. It is real, Slack, yeah. Let me see, uh, like, let's see how the spirits, how the spirits gonna work. Uh, this is for educational purposes, so you we're gonna check this out quick. A new era at Twitter to talking up the Tesla truck to fitting in a launch of the world's most powerful rocket. Elon Musk has had one hell of a week. Love him or loathe him, those seem to be the only two options. The man is nothing if not constantly on the move. Welcome to Technality. Today we're recapping some of the stratospheric highs and trolling lows from the week of Elon Musk. As more changes and layoffs loomed over Twitter, Elon Musk kicked off his week at Heidi Klum's Halloween party. We're not exactly sure what he's supposed to be dressed as, but what really seemed to scare many Twitter users is his plans for that precious blue little checkmark. The self-proclaimed Chief Twit originally announced he would be charging $20 a month for users to keep their blue check badges to prove their accounts are authentic. Even Stephen King, author of basically all the scariest novels ever written, was spooked by that one, prompting an exchange on, you guessed it, Twitter. Musk has since lowered it to eight bucks, but it's not clear when that new fee will kick in, or that the backlash from people in high places will end anytime soon. Politician AOC entered the fray over Musk's subscription plans, accusing him of messing with her notifications and mentions, and basically called him an insecure billionaire with a bad business plan. Multiple celebs, including Shonda Rhimes, Tony Braxton, and Sarah Bareilles, have all vowed to leave Twitter over their concerns with new management. Concerns like the fact that, according to a research group, the use of the N. Yeah, so there's a lot of that controversy. What's happening with this whole Twitter? Cause uh, all this, all this Twitter is is just bare uh, wickedness. You know that's being pushed. You know with this uh, basically porn whole bunch of different foolishness that's being spread you know and uh basically if you're gonna be if you're gonna sign up to twitter like they're gonna like you're like you're gonna have to pay a fee ultimately the thing what they're gonna want to do if you want to be on that shit like you have to go into the metaverse and then you're gonna have to get the the, the c the C H I P, you know, pretty much. All right. So, uh, this is Revelation 13 and 1, written by John the Revelator. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and I had, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. All right. So, we know that, you know, like the, uh, the two horn like a lamb, you know, during the Roman pagan Roman Empire would be the, the plebeians and the patricians, right, or the democratic and republicans, you know, 
the um you know and like this is the system that we're under all right the um the one here in canada uh called conservatives and then like the liberals you know we're under the same system the roman system all right and he had two horns like a lamb and sp spake as a dragon right and you know like they're like a dragon system that we're under right which is under the uh roman empire all over the pagan roman empire that's you know whose deadly wound was healed right with the european union nato we know that the european union is basically like the is the finance you know and then uh nato is like the military and he had and he exercised all power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and that and them which dwelt there and to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed right so i already sold i already said that right with uh basically the reincarnation of the roman empire right whose name now their name is uh nato all right with their military the north atlantic treaty organization and then the european union you know which is which is their finances all right and he had and he and he uh does great wonders so that make if fire cometh down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men right so we know that when like world war Two, um you know basically the fall of uh of nazi germany you know they you know they basically when you read about uh, operation paperclip and uh the manhattan project a lot of the the nazi uh a lot of the people because they said that uh, adolf hitler they say he committed suicide but basically they basically uh they came to the miracles a lot of the nazi party and also uh like some of them went to russia some of them went to like uh, south america as well you know and uh, france and also and um and like, this is how they that created this technology here in America with, um, you know, with, you know, like with the little bomb, no, the fat man, right? And then, and like the little boy, you know, which is their atomic weapons that was used, you know, with uh, Japan, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know, and uh, the, the Trinity, like the nuclear tests in, in like New Mexico, like this was like their first experiment, you know, and then the fat and the fat man, little boy came after. All right. Um, and he had and he does great wonders so that he make a fire come down from heaven. On the <clears throat> on the earth in the sight of men. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast right so you know with the Hiroshima Nagasaki you know with their technology and then now especially now you know they're using this technology you know <laughs> basically like to trap people's mind to control their mind the oculus all right let's uh see where the spirit's gonna lead let me watch this play this quick would you play a video game if you knew you could lose your life if you lost the co-founder of oculus palmer lucky says he's fascinated with linking your real life to your virtual avatar so he went ahead and designed a vr headset that would kill the player instantly if they died in a game lucky who sold oculus to meta for two billion dollars in 2014 described his invention in a blog post titled if you die in the game you die in real life the deadly vr headset contains three explosive charges embedded 
sighted just above the forehead. When the screen flashes red, indicating the player died in the game, the charges are detonated, destroying the brain in real life. Lucky says the inspiration came from Sword Art Online, a series of Japanese novels that have been turned into video games and anime. In Sword Art Online, there's a headset known as Nerve Gear that immerses the player in a virtual world and kills them if they lose. In the fictional version, the headset kills via microwaves that fry the brain. Lucky says his explosive headset is still a work in progress and is just a piece of office art for now. But he also predicts this won't be the last killer VR device you hear about. And it certainly brings new meaning to those two dreaded words. Game over. Yeah, so they show, they show you that in uh, the Black Mirror, you know. With um, basically the experiment, what they like did onto this J onto this uh, Edomite guy, and pretty much, um, you know, like this is gonna happen in real time. You know, people who have uh, the Oculus headset, you know, and that have have this C the C H I P <laughs> into their head. You know, that's going to be connected with it. So you're going to be playing a game or whatever, and then you're going to die in real life. You know, like this is their their metaverse, their virtual reality and all that stuff. You know, and this is what they want people to be. Be just, you know, zombies and dumb down, you know. You know, so this is their miracles. Saying them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live right so they're yeah so they lived all right you know with um the industrial revolution now we're, we're like now we're living in the fourth industrial revolution with this whole um these drones this all these technology that they have you know these robot, you know, soon, you know, they're gonna have driverless vehicle, you know, like they already have their stuff here, like driverless cars, driverless trucks, driverless vehicles, you know, like driverless damn trucks or um, like delivery trucks. So this is real, man. So that's why the Lord Yahweh Shah is gonna have to come like a, you know, and save us from this man, man. Watch this. For, and this is for educational purposes as well. Man. Elon Musk Neuralink is straight out of Black Mirror with the goal of allowing you to send a text with just your thoughts. But this brain chip has a controversial side from animal abuse to the possibility of chips being hacked, the dystopian idea of humans becoming one with artificial intelligence, and the unknown impacts on our brains. Neuralink, founded in 2016, is one of Musk's most controversial companies, developing brain chips to implant in people's skulls. The chip technology works by being inserted in the brain behind the ear. It's roughly the size of a coin and tiny wires and electrodes embed themselves and fan out inside the brain. These little wires have over a thousand electrodes to record and potentially stimulate brain activity. All of the data would connect from the chip in the brain to computers for research, basically downloading your brain activity onto a PC. Musk has repeatedly compared it to the Fitbit of the brain and says the ultimate goal is to have a product that combines AI and the human experience that works to prevent or treat neurological disorders. Yeah, so, you know, so it's like, this is their miracles, and the Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, and, and Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, is he, he's going to have to, like, put that in, you know, because ultimately, like, this is the Heavenly Father's experiment, this is his show, boy, um, it's going to get bad, man, alright, it's going to get bad, and he had... <clears throat> Power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, and that's what's going to be on. So that's why, um, you know, like the Israelites, you know, who's out here, it's, you know, who's preaching, you know, going on the highways and byways and and stuff. Uh, this thing's gonna, you know, this like we're living in a time of persecution, you know, and they. Uh, the thing with Kyrie Irving over like, the Barclays Center and uh, over Kingston, I mean, over um, Brooklyn, 
you know they had like an army of uh the IRC in purple you know you know but uh you know uh, like Kyrie Irving said he doesn't like he doesn't recognize them <laughs> whatever you know because he's uh you know like he's secure in his future you know that you know like with this world right like you know and ultimately this whole thing was set up all right because so so that they could have a reason to target the you know to target the real Israelite to target us all right so this is a time of persecution and he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, right? So we know that a mark is karagma, right? Which means a thing that's going to be inserted in your flesh, all right? And, you know, this was, and like, this is the system that we're going to be living under, or that people's going to be living under, because Lord will that, um, you know, I have, I have my integrity because this thing's going to get real, man. And Esau's gonna bring his technology, he's gonna bring all his, you know, they already have these drones and stuff, you know, in the in, in the military. So, you know, like these regular people have drones. So imagine, you know, so imagine like, you know, like when they bring out these military type drones, man. So, I, you know, and like that's why Daniel 12 at one, that Michael, the great prince, we're gonna stand for the children of Israel because it's gonna get that bad. Let me play this again. Another thing. Slack here. Nothing says futuristic dystopia quite like a swarm of killer drones making decisions over matters of human life and death. But true drone swarms, where multiple platforms communicate and collaborate to achieve a shared objective, have already been used to attack. A future where militaries around the world have access to devastating drone swarms is less a question of if, but when. Unlike other aspects of war, however, there are no legally binding rules to regulate lethal autonomous weapons. Can world powers agree to ban so-called slaughter bots designed to kill humans? Can the international community agree that all systems always be subject to human oversight and control? And can the world well, keep weapons like these out of the hands of terror groups and other non-state actors. One thing is certain, the rapid advancement of drone swarm technology is transforming the urban battlefield with major implications. Will humanity pull together before it's too late? Yeah, so that's why the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai and his son is gonna have to, he's gonna have to intervene on, on the elect's behalf because it's gonna be that bad. All right, they have this tech, all the different technology, man. Like, you know, it's like this is their miracles. Isaiah 54 and verse 6. Behold, uh, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy, right? So this whole thing with uh, the German scientists, which would be T-men, you know, also when you go to Genesis uh, 4, about that two ball cane he was he became a great artificer he's the first artificer you know basically who uh who brought out that technology back in the time of the all uh, that prior to the flood so these are the same same people who's coming back in their lap and uh you know and basically that's why the heavenly father he's gonna have to have he's gonna have to give his elect spiritual power you know to stand up because it's gonna get that bad man no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment shall be condemned and that's gonna be happening because the lord he's gonna give his elect that spiritual power man you know to uh like to overcome and fight you know to fight this beast system you know because we're living in the B system, but the Heavenly Father, he's going to have to intervene. You know, this is the heritage and the servant of the Lord and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Right. So it's going to get very bad. So we got to keep our eyes single and uh, watch as well as pray because it's going to get very bad and scarce out here. So with that, let us sell praises due unto Yahweh Bashim Asher. Double honor to the apostles of Great Most Peace and blessings to the hope of members of the elect. 
hopefully this video was edifying to you. Um, shalom.